Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I know you're thinking, this is really weird. I can actually see your face. And it is gonna be really weird. I'm gonna be doing a very different kind of video today. I'm gonna be ranking 124 Simpsons characters. And let me tell you, we've got a whole lot of iconic characters to look at. We've got Artie Ziff, Dr. Nick, Lunch Lady Doris, and Luigi Risotto. So to do this, I have used a tier list and I've named various categories myself in order to define and separate these Springfieldians. And these are gonna be returning characters in the show because I know there've been over 900 guest stars and it would be impossible to rank them all today. But if you'd like to see that at some point, do let me know in the comments and I'll give it a good step. Anyway, so, with each character, I will be giving a little reason as to why they belong to each tier and it will start to shape what the real defining qualities are. I hope. So we've got the absolute S tier, which is the Stone Cutters Unite, which are the elite group of Springfieldians and personal favorite characters of mine, just ones that are real MVPs in the show. Next, we've got the second best category, which is the Max Power Group. And then we have Cromulin, which is of course perfectly fine. We've got the Duds, the No Homers Club. And then we've got the absolute worst of the worst, the Get Bent category. And um, this is gonna be really fun. I can finally express those characters I would either love to see disappear off the face of the earth, characters I just wanna see more from, and characters that just aren't very funny. Um, but overall, I love everyone. Um, I've got a lot of love to give. This is just a bit of fun. I will link the tier list down in the description below so you could give it a bit of a go and you can always tag me on Instagram and Twitter and show me where you'd place different characters. And even after looking at this list, I can tell there's gonna be some controversial opinions and I'm a bit worried. Anyway, so without further ado, let's get into the tier list. So straight off, we have Cletus Buckler. And I recently did Cletus Buckler's timeline on my channel. And I have to say, I did learn a lot more about him and his family. He kind of personifies the country aspect of Springfield. And I think he does contribute quite a bit to it, to be honest. Okay, so Cletus Buckler, I'm gonna put him in. Cromulent, perfectly fine for now. That might change. Anyway, next we've got Comic Book Guy. Comic book guy's cool. We do see later on the show he gets married, which is lovely. Um, he's one of those characters that I feel was getting a redemption arc. He's one of those like one note characters that the creators wants to give a heart to. Um, he's gone through some weird relationships with like Agnes. Um, I feel like they've been throwing him all over the joint in the show sometimes. So I don't necessarily love him. I'm gonna put him in Cromulent perfectly fine. That might be a hot take, but it's my hot take. I might change my mind tomorrow anyway. Okay, next we've got Constance Harm, who's a bad ass lady. I don't know if we see too much of her in the show other than giving people really cruel punishments and just overall being a parody of Judge Judy. She's very mean. I like Judge Snyder more, but then you can't have a show without having some mean characters. But overall, if I was in court and she came along, I would say, get bent. Next, we've got Cookie Kwan. I think that's her name. Cookie Kwan, yes. So she's been a real estate agent. Um, she's kind of thrown in there whenever one of the Simpsons just has an office job. She's fine. I don't see a lot of her. Um, I don't really see what she contributes to the show. She's more just one of those background characters that gets thrown in every so often to either make like a snarky remark or I don't know I'm gonna put her into the no homers club okay next we've got this nerdy guy Kyle aka database with a very sick name he's okay I mean you've got the nerd box has kind of been filled with Martin and you've got Lisa who's kind of on the cuff of being still Kind of a normal character, a consistent character, a character with her own flaws and someone you love. And then you've got Kyle, who is a background nerd in a way. Um, I don't think he's really had any standout moments. I can imagine him in that board game being the dud, 
So I think I'm going to put him as the dud. I think Disco Stew, he is great for those one-liners. I don't really see what he likes. I know he likes disco and I know he likes a good flirt and a good dance, but I don't feel like I know him. Oh, it's difficult. It's difficult because on one hand, I'm like, I don't want to judge this just on what characters we've seen more development of because I don't think that necessarily works with some characters like these guys. He would be good at a party, so he's not going to be at the No Homers Club. He might be the dud. He might be the dud. Dolph. I love Dolph. Dolph, he belongs to the three bullies with Kearney, Jimbo and Dolph. I like his attitude. He's kind of like a Californian surfer bully guy. I, I, um, I dig with him. I think when the bullies are together, they provide really good entertainment. He's kind of a supporting act in a way to Nelson. He can't really hold an episode, but I do like him. Similar to Cletus. So I'm going to put Dolph in Cromulent perfectly fine. Now we've got Dr. Nick. Dr. Nick is cool. I like Dr. Nick. I can't say that when he makes a presence in The Simpsons, I'm like, oh yeah, he's so funny. He's really good. Dr. Nick. Oh my God. I think this, this is all going to be really full, but I think I'm going to put him in Cromulent perfectly fine. Dredrick Tatum, of course. Dredrick Tatum. I like him, but he is so far away from The Simpsons zeitgeist that I don't necessarily see him being involved in the show much further than in a boxing ring. At least with Disco Stew, he gets out there. He goes to ski resorts. He just pops in every so often. He's at business conferences. This guy gets around. Dredderick doesn't really. So he's going to join Cookie Kwan, Cookie Kwan in the No Homers Club. Next, we've got Duffman, who is a walking catchphrase but he's iconic at the same time. I love his costume. He loves to party. I think he's going to be in. <sighs> Cromulent perfectly fine. He's not going to be breaking this wall because I think his stereotypical um, catchphrase status blocks him from furthering that. But at the same time, I do like him. And I like the energy he brings. He brings a lot of good energy. Next, we've got Eddie, who I don't think is as entertaining as Lou. I think at least Lou seems a bit of a cooler police guy. He just kind of stands behind Wiggum and Lou and looks a bit dumbfounded, which is kind of a cool representation of the police because a lot of the time, that's probably what they are. Joking. Anyway, so I'm going to put Eddie. Eddie can be the dud. I love Fat Tony so much. I love... Um, the energy he brings to the episode, I think he really brings it to that dark mafia. I, he's just one of my favorite characters of all time. I can't really pinpoint why. I love Goodfellas, I love The Godfather, therefore I must love Fat Tony. I mean, similarly to the other ones, he is kind of a stereotype, but still, I love Fat Tony. So he is gonna be ranking as one of the highest so far in max power. I might bring him up, bring him up in a bit, but for now, he's going to be in there. Now we've got Professor Frank. I do like Professor Frank. I think he's a fun guy. I love how he helps Lisa at various times. Um, he's part of Springfield's Mensa. He does contribute a lot. Whenever Springfield needs a great mind, they bring in Professor Frank. Therefore, I think I'm going to put him in Max Power. I don't know, because I don't love him as much as Fat Tony, but I still think he contributes in a way which is more than Cletus, Dolph, Duffman, all these guys. I think I still think he brings something um, special. Next, we've got the uni brown baby. So Gerald Sampson is cool, but he's got one look. We do see future clips of him where he's getting it down with Maggie. But I think overall, he seems like a mean, mean baby. And I don't care for him so he can get bent. Gil. Gil would find it really hard if I put him in No Homer's Club or Get Bent. Or The Dud. Or Cromulent. I actually like old Gil. I like how pathetic he seems. I think a lot of us can probably resonate with Gil. I think he's one of those secretly tragic characters that probably needs a really good backstory. I can just imagine he's got like 
He's gone through divorce. He's lost his kids. He's now a broken man just trying to make ends meet in Springfield. And he gets chewed up and spat out every single time. So old Gil, I'm going to give him a chance. I do actually find him more funny than Cletus, then Comper Guy, and Dr. Nick, and maybe Duffman. He just seems very human to me. So I think I'm going to put him in Cromulent. Perfectly fine. Next, we've got God. And I don't think God should be included. He's got five fingers. He just doesn't fit in. So he's going to get bent. Sorry, God. I love Abe Simpson. We we learn a lot about his past. Um, I did a whole timeline on his backstory and it was really, really complicated, complicated but for all of the best reasons. Abe Simpson, you deserve to be in max power. I don't think you're quite there enough to be in the elite, but I think max power is a pretty good place for you. I love you. Hank Scorpio, I don't know why you're here. You were here in one episode when you should have been in the freaking movie. He was actually going to be the original villain for the Simpsons movie. And unfortunately for a decision, I don't really know why um Russ Cargill took over but Albert Brooks still did the voice for it it was very confusing but I do love Hank Scorpio I love Hank Scorpio because he's not just your typical villain there seems to be a lovable side to him he befriended Homer and then tried to take over the world we loved Hank Scorpio and he does a good fruit basket Hank Scorpio so even though he's been in one episode I do like him more than these characters so I think I'm going to put Hank Scorpio, the star of one episode, in Max Power. Hans Moleman. Hans Moleman's a bit like old Gil in the sense that he's a pathetic man and one that can never catch a break. The only thing of old Gil, I think he's far more human than Moleman, but I don't think Moleman deserves to be in the dud category at all. So I'm going to put him in Cromulent perfectly fine. I mean that Football on the Groin was one of the best theatrical movements I've ever seen. So therefore, Hans Moleman, the enigma of Springfield, should be in Cromulent perfectly fine. I don't think he has this status of being amongst, amongst these Avengers. He certainly wouldn't fit in with the mighty giants that would be here. But I think this is a pretty good place for him. And I think seeing as how he's been treating his life, I think he'd be pretty happy here. Okay, Helen Lovejoy. Helen Lovejoy. I kind of like that she's the leader of all of the um, like domesticated housewives of Springfield. I like that there could be a secret dark side to her. I like that she is like an unashamed biatch. Um, I don't like the way she treats Marge. But like I said before, you do need villains in the show. And she's different from the judge because the judge just comes out mean. Helen Lovejoy does so in a very sneaky way. Hmm. Oh, difficult. Difficult, difficult. I don't think she contributes enough yet to be in Cromulent perfectly fine. I think at the moment, she's just a collective of women that aren't very nice in Springfield, along with Agnes. Um, and I think there could be a lot more that they could do with her. I think in my mind, she's interesting, but I don't think that's been reflected in the show. That's that. Next, we've got Herb. He's fine. I think he's a bit like Larry Burns, where he comes in, he tries to integrate himself as part of the family, and then he goes again quite quickly, so you don't really feel attached to him. But I don't think he has the presence enough to really be in with the cool gang. So I think he's going to be in the No Homers Club. So next we've got Herman Herman, which is perhaps one of the most striking characters in the show. I love Bart the General. Um, he kind of reminds me of Lieutenant Dan in Forrest Gump. I think he... He, yeah, I think he's um, a really cool, moody character with a great voice, great presence. I just wish they utilised him a bit more. I think they definitely could. I think he's going to be in... I don't know, because we don't really see him a lot in the later seasons at all. Um, I think there could be a lot of things they could do with him, similar to Helen Lovejoy. 
but I don't think they've reached his potential yet. And for that reason, he's going to be in the dud. This just forces some kind of energy into the world that these characters need more. Dr. Hibbert. I do like Dr. Hibbert. He seems like a very good doctor. I would trust him more than Dr. Nick, but I wouldn't necessarily say that he is more entertaining than Dr. Nick. I mean, Springfield needs a competent doctor, so I think he is going to be cromulent perfectly fine. Homer Simpson. Homer Simpson is the Simpsons. Let's put that straight. And I would be an absolute idiot if I don't put him in Stonecutter's Unite Elite because he was number one. He was the chosen one. There's no point me even trying to reason with this. Homer Simpson is an S-tier Stonecutter Unite Elite. Okay. Now we've got Miss Hoover, who I could really do without. She seems moody. She seems a bit boring. A bit dull. I mean, Edna... Freaking, she doesn't look so hot here, but Edna brings a lot. Miss Hoover doesn't. Miss Hoover, you're going to be in the dud. I'll put you next to the nerd because you can teach him and he can teach you. And nah, let's, yeah, anyway. Okay, next we've got Itchy. You wouldn't want to get on the wrong side of him. When the Simpsons kids watch Itchy and Scratchy, I'm not necessarily entertained. I like their reactions to it. I don't necessarily like what's being happen what's happening on screen. And when I think there were discussions about Itch and Scratchy having their own spin-off, and I just don't know what you could do with it. You've got Tom and Jerry. You don't need an Itchy and Scratchy spin-off, I don't think. So Itchy, he doesn't even belong in Springfield. He's in the TV. So he's gonna be in the No Homers Club. He's an iconic image in the simpsons he's a mouse he's a cartoon mouse don't need it jacqueline bouvier i love jacqueline bouvier in her storyline with abe when they're parodying the graduate i love that scene i love her interactions with patty and selma and marge and how she always seems above it all when it comes to thanksgiving she seems like a moody old grandma who can't be pleased by anything and yet I do love her. Oh, I do like all the Bouviers, but I can't help but think that Jacqueline Bouvier kind of blends in with Patty and Selma because a lot of the times they are seen together apart from the episode where Mr. Burns and Abe Simpson are trying to woo her. Otherwise, she just seems to turn up for Thanksgiving and eat their turkey. But I do like her sass. I'm gonna put her in Cromulent perfectly fine. That's what I'm gonna do. Janie, Janie, where have you been? I haven't seen a lot from Janie in a long time. Therefore, sorry, Janie, you're going to be in the No Homers Club. Actually, no, you're kind of going to be on this level. You can be with Miss Hoover. There. Next, we've got Jasper. Jasper in his fridge. He's woken, he's defrosted, and he's ready for a paddling. I better not upset him. I like Jasper. I think he brings a lot of great comedic moments in the show. I love the scenes where they cut to the retirement home. And I love his um, banter with Abe. I do like Jasper. I probably like him quite a lot. So I think I'm going to put him in Cromulent perfectly fine. Oh, I feel like this line's going to be really, really long. Jessica Lovejoy... Jessica Lovejoy was great in the episode where she is being a bad influence on Bart. But similarly to how I can see, I mean, who was it that I spoke about? Helen Lovejoy and Herman Herman. She could have a comeback and have quite an interesting backstory, but Meryl Streep isn't going to come back and voice Jessica Lovejoy. She's just not. So I'm going to put her... And also she's been drugged so much that she's probably like a shadow of who she was but I did like her in the show. I'm gonna put her in the dud. Next, we've got Jimbo. Jimbo is part of Kearney and Dolph, like I said, and I do like Jimbo too. Jimbo, for a similar reason as Dolph, I'm gonna put him in Cromulent perfectly fine. Now I've got Julio Franco, who I've got to admit, 
I remember a couple of episodes he was in um, when Homer goes to live with him after an argument with Marge, but I don't know too much about him. So to me, if he's not that memorable, then I'm going to put him in the No Homers Club because at least with these characters, I can kind of remember what scenes they're a part of. And I mean, I can pinpoint their role in the show. But with Julio, I don't think I can. Kang and Kodos. Kang and Kodos are icons of The Simpsons, especially Treehouse of Horror. Treehouse of Horror are the only times where these guys come up. But I do like them. I think they... I think they belong in max power, just because they are so iconic. And I like the excitement of only seeing them around one time a year. Um, I'm actually going to do a timeline of them during Halloween, which I think would be really, really cool. And I'm excited for it. I'm going to put them in max power because they're certainly, I mean, when I think of the Simpsons, these guys definitely come up. Kearney. Kearney. I do like Kearney. I have to say that Dolph, we don't get a huge amount from him. We know Kearney has got a son and we think Kearney's probably around six years old that keeps coming back to school. I mean, there's something interesting there. I do like Dolph's swag a bit more, but Kearney, like Jimbo, like Dolph, I think they belong, belong in Cromulent perfectly fine. Then we've got Kent Brockman, whose interaction in the show is mainly on TV to broadcast the news, as we all know. He's fine. He's just one of those rich guys in Springfield. Whenever there's a scene where they join the country club, he's always there. He's like Rainier Wolf Wolfcastle, where if they need like a rich party scene, he's dotted around. We don't necessarily see different parts of his character. However, I don't see him as the dud. I think if ever Springfield wants to discuss like the... Um, the hierarchy or the A-list status compared to like the working class in Springfield. I think he's a good indicator of that divide. So I think he does do something, but I don't necessarily think he's a brilliant, brilliant character that can carry an episode. Therefore, Ken Brockman, I'm going to put you in Cromulent perfectly fine. Okay, next we've got Kirk Van Houten. Can I borrow a feeling? Yes, you can. Kirk Van Houten, I do like his moments when he had to draw dignity, um, when he had a race car bed. And I do like the arc of his divorce with Milhouse's mum. I do like how pathetic he is, a bit like old Gil. I love me some pathetic characters like Hans Molman, but still he doesn't contribute enough to be put into the max power category. Edna, I love Edna. I love Edna so much. Um, I love how she's been beaten up by the punches of love, how she's overcome it. She found her Prince Charming with Ned and unfortunately Marsha Wallace passed away, but her legacy and her character will live on forever. I love how she was a bit saucy. I love how no one ever gets a second chance with Edna. I think there was so much that the Simpsons did with her. I think I'm gonna put her in Stonecutter's Elite because we need some ladies in here. And to put her above Fat Tony, that is a real compliment. Krusty, Krusty is cool. I like Krusty a lot. Krusty's one of those which is an iconic character in The Simpsons. Um, he He's kind of the figurehead for the corrupted celebrity. He's a chain-smoking children entertainer who shouldn't be trusted to be broadcasted in front of kids. I really like him. I think Krusty deserves to be in max power. I don't think he's quite S tier because I don't think he has the fragility that Edna has and he certainly doesn't carry a scene like Homer Simpson. Therefore, I think he's going to be in max power. So we've got Dewey Largo, Mr. Largo. He's one of those characters who's a bit annoying. He doesn't obviously contribute a lot in the show. He's mostly there for when obviously Lisa's playing music and uh, you kind of need to teach her to tell one of them off whether that's no one likes Millhouse or telling Lisa to not be distracted by Nelson. Mr. Largo, I think he's pretty annoying, to be honest. He might be on the same level as Cookie Quam. I think he's one of those characters that's a bit too annoying. So I think he can get bent. At least with these guys, I can kind of tolerate them in the show. There wasn't any need for him to belittle Millhouse like that. He's gone through enough. Laura Powers. So she is the daughter of this lady, Mrs. Powers. She shouldn't really be in this list. She broke Bart's heart. She doesn't come back. 
she wasn't given enough chances to really shine out as a character in her own right. She was a great crush for Bart. I love the episode where Ruth Powers and Marge goes on their girl road trip, like Thelma and Louise. Whereas Laura Powers, I do obviously love that episode, but she hasn't been brought back. We don't know what's going on in her life. And I think overall, Shauna kind of fills that void that she left. So I think in my eyes, and probably Bart's eyes, she can get bent. Next, we've got the blue-haired lawyer. He's always there sneaking around when someone's done something naughty. He does obviously carry a role. He's got a distinct role. He's the lawyer. Um, he's mostly seen with Mr. Burns advising him, being a bit of an a-hole to everyone else. He kind of depicts censorship. He seems like a smart guy, but I don't think he necessarily adds much to the show except for being a lawyer and... Let's be honest, Lionel Hutz is a far better lawyer. And then we've got one of Fat Tony's cronies. Sorry, I had to do quite a lot of Googling to actually understand what this guy's called. He's Legs. Now, I know Johnny Tight Lips, and I know... Who was the other one? Louis. But Legs? I do not know a lot about Legs. But then again, I love Fat Tony, but Fat Tony can carry himself. He doesn't need these guys behind him. Certainly not someone who I don't even remember his name. Legs. Legs. You can walk those legs down to the... I think you can walk yourself down to the No Homers Club. That's where I think you should be. Sipping your martini. Next, we've got Lenny. Lenny, of course, is the comedy genius that always gets things stuck in his eye. But he's also the best friend of Carl. Now, if you remember, no, I, I don't think I've done Carl yet. No, but Lenny is the less attractive version of Carl. They can basically be summed up together, but I think Lenny does have a bit more of a personality. He's a bit more pathetic. And we all know I like pathetic people. But then again, I don't think he quite deserves to be a Max Power or the Stonecutters elite, even though he is in this show. I'm going to put him in Cromulent Perfectly Fine, but he is quite high up in there. I think he deserves it a bit more than... He deserves it a bit more than the bullies. He is one of the guys in the power plant that really urges Homer to do some like idiotic stuff. I think he does contribute a lot. I like the idea that Homer has friends at work and then you can go and hang out with them in the, par, in the bar. And they do have some adventures together. So I think Lenny does deserve to be kind of high, but he's certainly not as iconic as these guys. Okay, next we've got Lewis Clark. And Lewis Clark was one of those characters that we saw a lot more in the early seasons, but he seems pretty voiceless now. Oh, we don't really see him a lot, which is such a shame because I think Bart, you know, we mainly see Bart with Nelson or Milhouse, but I think he could kind of benefit from having some more normal friends around him. Um, I know he used to basically be responsible for laughing at whatever Bart did um, in terms of like bullying Skinner, but I don't really see him a lot in the show. And to be honest, I don't think he's invited onto the show anymore. I don't think he's included and it's really sad. I don't hate him for any reason, but I just don't think he's there anymore. Okay, this is Lindsay Nagel, and she always comes up with some kind of idea to get Krusty, boost his ratings. She's a marketing lady, she's a business lady, she wears a good power suit. However, she kind of carries the similar roles to, like, this Judge Judy lady and blue-haired lawyer in the fact that she doesn't really hold herself. She's normally accompanied by other people. She normally says the same ideas over and over again. Um, I don't think she deserves anything higher than the dud, certainly. She's a bit more interesting than Cookie Kwam, but I still think she's gonna be in the No Homers Club. I definitely think so. Now, Lionel Hutz, I love Lionel Hutz. Phil Hartman was an excellent, excellent actor, and I loved everything he contributed to the show. Um, it's just a really sad story. Um, but the characters he brought in The Simpsons were so full of life. Um, fantastic. Him and Troy McClure are A-star um, characters. I think Lionel Hutz. Lionel Hutz. I do love Lionel Hutz. I love Lionel Hutz more than Lenny. 
I love him more than Cletus. Comic book guy. I would say he's on a similar level to Krusty. I think he's that corrupt lawyer, um, but he's still kind of, I mean, that's his charm. He's a sleazy lawyer, but you know, he'd help you. Um, I think he's got a strong character, a strong presence. Um, Lionel Hutz, I'm gonna put you in max power. Lisa, I think Lisa definitely deserves to be in the Stone Cutters Unite Elite. I think the family members, they are probably gonna be all here anyway. But with Lisa specifically, we do see lots of different um, strands of her personality in the show. I think she's one of those characters that probably has the most variety of episodes. She's one that many of us girls can relate to in the sense that, you know, you just want to you just want to fit in and um, you've got to kind of navigate. Shall I stick to my guns? Shall I be who I am? Or do I dull myself down for just to fit in? And I think that's for a kids TV show. I think that's important messaging to talk about. In a similar way to Edna and um, Old Gill, I think she provides a very human response. She provokes a very human response for us. And of course, she's part of the big family. She's one of the main five. She belongs in the Stone Cutters Unite Elite. Next, we've got Louis from Fat Tony's Gang. He's a bit like Legs. I did. I do have to admit, I had to look up his name. Um, I think except for Johnny Tight Lips, I don't really know the others. So I think to be honest, he can join. He does have a few more speaking roles than Legs though. So I'm gonna put him in the duds because I do love me some Italian American mafia characters, but he obviously can't be on the same level as Fat Tony or Fit Tony, however you see him. So he's gonna be, yeah, I don't think he contributes enough like these characters. He's kind of grouped together as a three. Whereas I think the bullies, the you can say that for the bullies, they are grouped together as a three. But I think in terms of the mafia, they, they are just joints at the hip. They're joints at the hip. Okay, now we've got Lou. Lou from the police force. He seems like a competent guy. He should probably be the chief of police if someone just gave him a chance. He's a boss boy. Um, but he's obviously not an iconic character. We know that, we can admit that. I think he belongs in Cromulent Perfectly Fine. He has a role, he's a policeman. He's probably the voice of reason to Chief Wiggum. He probably dials back the insanity. Um, but that's not to say that when he comes on screen, I'm like, there he is, Lou. Next, we've got Luan Van Houten. Luan is a difficult one to place because I do like the way she's kind of paired off with all of the hotties in Springfield. God knows where she finds them. Um, she's also not really lumped together with the rest of the housewives in that Maud and Helen Lovejoy was. She's not a judgmental character in a sense. Um, she kind of, she's an independent woman. She knows what she wants. And that's definitely not Kirk Van Houten. I kind of respect her for that. But overall, I don't think that she contributes a huge amount. And I don't really see what her role is, except for being Milhouse's mum or for being a bit of a MILF character. So I'm gonna put her in the dud. Okay, next we've got Luigi Risotto. Luigi Risotto. He cooks a mean pizza and he does have a good catchphrase, but there's nothing else. There's nothing else in him. He's not a character. He is someone who pops out of a chef window, says something fun and pops back in again. At least with a sea captain, he kind of gets out of there a bit more. Luigi, I think he can get bent. Okay, lunch lady Doris. She does grease up a mean willy, but that doesn't mean to say I know who she is. At the same time, I do prefer her from Miss Hoover. I do prefer her from Disco Stew, Eddie. Helen Lovejoy, I think there's more potential there, but I'm gonna put lunch lady Doris in Cromulent Perfectly Fine because she represents all of those lunch ladies that couldn't give a flying fickle what you wanted for dinner. She was like, here's your sludge, take it and go. 
And I liked her contribution in the Treehouse of Horror with cooking up the kids. I think she was pretty awesome in that. Yeah, Lunch Lady Doris, she can be in Cromulent perfectly fine. Lurleen Lumpkin has one of the best character designs in The Simpsons. I love her so much. And she's as beautiful as she is in real life than she is in the show. She's stunning. I liked her character. I really like the episodes where Homer and Marge have to navigate their relationship through temptation. I think Life in the Fast Lane, um, when Marge is seduced by a really good bowler is an interesting episode. I like the Mindy Homer and I do like Lurleen. But further than her main episode, I don't think she contributes a huge amount, unfortunately. But I love her character design. I love the problem she posed for Homer and how he had to again realize that Marge is his soulmate. And yeah, I think it was, yeah. I think she belongs in perfectly fine. Maggie, Maggie's a hard one. She's probably one of the only Simpsons family members that I don't think can definitely be placed in the Stonecutters elite. I just don't think she can. She obviously has some standout episodes like Who Shot Mr. Burns? Um, but except for being a baby that can be really, really violent at times, there's not a lot to her. I think her standout moments are more a reflection on who she's going against. So in terms of who shot Mr. Burns, I think the performances surrounding her outweighed what she contributed, which is why it was so unexpected that she was the one who shot him. I mean, obviously, because she's a baby, but anyway. And then also with the flashback episode where there's that classic scene of Homer looking at his power plant wall in his office and he rearranges the collage to say, do it for her. That is one of the most touching, heartbreaking moments, also heart mending moments of the show. Um, but that was Homer, that was Homer. So obviously I can't put her in Stonecutter's Elite because she doesn't contribute as much as these guys. Um, however, I feel really, really bad putting her in Cromulent perfectly fine. So I'm gonna put her in Max Power because She's still an iconic character. Man Jeweler. So Apu's wife. She's a beautiful lady. I loved their wedding. I think it's a really nice story where Apu was um, doubting, not doubting his faith, but he didn't really want to go through the traditions of his faith until he met Man Jeweler and realized that she really was the one for him. I think that was a really nice circle moment, but I don't necessarily think that she played a huge role in that discovery. Obviously she was the one who changed his mind, but she didn't even say much. Anyway, so Manjula, I think you're gonna be a dud girl. Sorry, girl. Next we've got Marge, I love Marge. I think she's both dorky and the voice of reason in the show, which is a really hard balancing act, but I think she does it so well. Um, I love that the heart she brings to the show. I love that she has some really funny standout moments like I think she's um sewing her Chanel suit and she's sitting there in her bedroom and the dress is going wrong it's being shriveled up by the sewing machine and she goes um I guess all you can do in this instant is like laugh or uh, that was really crap I think she's got some really human funny moments and I love Marge I would love to meet her dad a bit more. I think we can see more of a backstory with her, but even just her looking back at her relationship with her mum in Lisa's belly, where she saw that her, um, her upbringing probably was quite hard. I mean, Selma and Patty didn't look like the most supportive sisters and her mum does seem very cold. And I think for Marge to turn out to be such a warm, funny human character, shows a lot of, it shows a lot of um, heart and gumption. That's what I'm trying to say. Overall, Marge, you're gonna be in the Stone Cutters Elite. Martin Prince, Martin Prince is the nerd of the school, but he also is very preppy. No one really gets him down. He doesn't really feel too affected by bullying. Um, I do like him for that reason. He is unashamedly himself. He doesn't let Nelson beat him down. He He's just himself, I like that. I don't believe he is a standout as these characters. I do like him, but 
he can be a bit annoying. I think Martin can go in... Oh, I think Martin can go in Cromulent perfectly fine. Because let's not forget that Cromulent is perfectly fine. It's not bad. They're good characters, but they're just not on the same level as these guys, which is fine. Perfectly fine. Then we've got Marvin Monroe. And Marvin Monroe is perhaps the most hated character in the show. He was basically killed off because his voice was far too hard for the voice actor to do. So, do we hate him? He did have a really annoying voice. And obviously, he doesn't appear in a lot of the episodes. And I think I am going to have to side with the Simpsons creators and say that he can get bent. Next, we've got Maud Flanders, who is Ned Flanders' deceased wife. I'm currently doing her timeline and it shows a pretty consistent um, level of how toxic their marriage was, which is really interesting. Um, so she's a fairly interesting character. She changed a lot in the show in the fact that before then there was no um, death that really happened through a consistent character that really affected the rest of the show. Maud's death caused Ned to be a single father. It caused him to go on the dating scene. It caused him to meet Edna. I like discussing her contribution to the show and I think her timeline will be really interesting to look at. She comes back as a ghost on quite a few occasions. She comes back in people's dreams. Um, overall, I think there is a lot that can be done with her. However, she doesn't quite come back in full force that I would expect these guys to. Um, at the end of the day, she was an uptight, Christian, generic um, supporting character, which was highlighted a lot in the show. Um, I think, to be honest, her death and the movement of her death was far more prolific than her actual character. Therefore, I'm going to put her in. Hmm. Cromulent perfectly fine. That's where I'm going to put her. Okay, next we've got Sideshow Mel, who is Krusty's sidekick on his show. Um, he's fine. He's very dramatic. Um, we find out in A Serious Flanders that he actually has a wife. Um, they've got an open relationship, um, which could be an interesting um, element of his character. However, there's not a lot you can do with him. And to be honest, I do find him a bit annoying. And I don't really get... I mean, Krusty's a clown... Why the hell had they got a man in a caveman costume with a British accent? It is kind of funny when you compare him to Sideshow Bob in the fact that they were both dramatics in their own right and they obviously have like similar personalities. But obviously Sideshow Bob, you know, he commits murder. He hates rakes. Sideshow Mel is just kind of there. Oh, don't really like him too much, you know, but I don't hate him aggressively. So I'm going to put him as the dud. Next, we've got Melhouse. So Melhouse is, is, of course, Bart's best friend. He's got many iconic moments. It's all coming up Melhouse, Thrill House. I think he does have a warped relationship with Lisa. I think I've discussed it in their timeline where he can be seen as very obsessive. Um, there was a stint where he got arrested in like a little sight gag in one of the Simpsons future episodes, which is quite interesting. Um, I think he does contribute. He doesn't contribute enough as these guys. Definitely not. But he's definitely kind of on the same par as Lenny being one of the main character's best friends and getting into all sorts of mischief. Next, we got Mo. I love Mo Sislak. One of the reasons, I mean, I'm going to just go ahead and pull him right here just so I can talk about him. He has an iconic personality, an iconic voice, an iconic presence and iconic, iconic episodes. One of my favorite episodes, and I would say it is my favorite episode, is Flaming Mo. He's just, I mean, he's a dark, lonely, depressed bartender, basically living in his bar, which isn't doing so well with the same five, six patrons. I just think he, he's so iconic. He's, he's got, he's kind of got relationships with all of the main characters. He fancies Midge. He calls Lisa, little Lisa Simpson. You can imagine him knowing her from a really young age. Obviously him and Homer have a relationship, whether or not it's a turbulent friendship or Homer really depends on Mo to satisfy his 
addiction, but also he provides a nice release for Homer away from the family home. And obviously he looks after Maggie and he babysits her and she is she brings out a tenderness in him that still feels natural to who he is. Um, I do really like Mo and I think for that reason he deserves he deserves to be in the Stone Cutters Elite Club. He definitely does. Next you've got Mona Simpson. I do like Mona Simpson. Glenn Close voices her, so we do I mean weirdly she comes up quite a lot. I do like her story. I do like looking into Homer's childhood. Um, I think in the last season, it threw a spanner in the works in terms of continuity, but then who cares about that? She does seem like a lovely, lovely lady, but she's out on the lamb. She's a bit flaky, but then she kind of has to be. Um, for that reason, she's obviously not gonna be on Abe's level because A, she hasn't been there as much for Homer, um, and B, she's not there enough to really contribute a great deal. I think she's a bit like Maggie in the sense where the scene she's in, it brings out the best in Homer's performance. So when Homer's sitting on the bonnet of the car, looking out into the sunset, um, really missing his mother after she left, that kind of reflects more, it kind of made us love Homer more. That's what I'm gonna say. So with Mona, I'm gonna say her as a character, I'm gonna say perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. I think, even though I do like that hippie edge to her and she does have reasons for wanting to go into hiding, I do actually enjoy her more than Professor Frank. So I think she does deserve to be in Max Power, but not at the same level as Abe. Probably similar as Maggie for that reasoning that I said before. Oh my God, now we've got Krusty's monkey. How am I gonna judge him? Mr. Teeny. We've got Mr. Teeny and his really cute pink hat. Mr. Teeny, I could do without him. I don't really know what he does. I mean, he smokes. He um, probably provides a bit more support than Sideshow Mel does. But again, he doesn't talk. But that doesn't, does that matter? I think it does. I think if you're in a cartoon show and we don't really know what you're about, I think you deserve to be near itchy in that sense. You know, a fun animated cartoon character, but I don't know you. I don't know you. Okay, now we've got Nelson's mum. Mrs. Munts is a horrible lady. Um, time and time again, she lets Nelson down and I, my heart really, <sighs> breaks for him. And I think that's his, that's Mrs. Munts. It's his dad and it's Mrs. Munts. So for that reason, she can get bent. I do like how, I do like the story in the sense where she's like a trailer trash mom and she's obviously has to go through a lot to make ends meet. I do respect that. But I think this category doesn't necessarily have to mean people that don't contribute to the story, but it can also be characters that you just wouldn't want to hang out with. You just wouldn't, you don't want to be associated with them. I mean, I don't want to be in a party with Mrs. Muntz, Marvin Monroe, and definitely not Gerald Sampson. Mrs. Muntz does not deserve to be higher than the No Homers Club. Ned Flanders, iconic character. I love him so much. He deserves to be in Max Power. He doesn't quite deserve to be in the Stonecutters simply because he, he is a flanderization of a character. We don't see a lot of variations in his character or strands in his feelings, but I do like him and I do like what he brings to the show. So I think he's gonna be in Max Power. I'm probably gonna put him kind of here. I mean, he's quite high up. I am gonna rearrange these as, oh, what have I done? I'm gonna put these. Yeah, okay, let's carry on before I mess anything up. Nelson, I love Nelson. I like his roller coaster of a relationship with Lisa. I like looking into his future and I like how he's developing into having more of a friendship with Bart and his evolution from being, you know, a standalone bully with a one dimensional character to, you know, we saw silly sides of his personality. We know he loves 
Andy Williams. We know he knows a good recipe to a huckleberry. I think there's a lot of fun that's been had with his character comparing his harsh bully exterior to his warm, warm heart and how even though he's had probably the worst upbringing ever, he still comes across as a pretty nice guy. And he's been given a real redemption arc in the show that feels natural, it feels steady, and it feels very real. He's just one of those iconic characters in the show that really contributes. So Nelson, you are Max Power. And then we've got these three nerds. I don't really know why they're in here. They went to university with Homer. I think if ever Homer needs some smart minds, he can call up his friends. They're not going to be invited to any parties. They're going to be in the No Homers Club because no one wants to be friends with those. I'm joking. Um, Just because they don't contribute enough. Um, I think like the radio presenters that we're going to see here, they are pulled in for like random gags and stuff, but they don't necessarily carry a huge presence in the show. Oh my God, what's he called? Oh, <laughs> he's called Old Jewish Man. Old Jewish Man. He's definitely not on his level, Jasper's level. Um, old Jewish Man. <sighs> but he's still funny. He still provides a good laugh. So I think he's going to be in perfectly fine, you know. I think he's he carries himself enough to have some funny parts in the show. And like I said before, I love the retirement scenes in the show. And he always seems to be a part of it. He's going to be in Cromulent perfectly fine. Otto, I mean, he's kind of, he represents the the deadbeat, weed-smoking character. But otherwise, he doesn't really carry a huge amount. He's a bit like Ken Brockman in that sense, where he has his role, he sticks to it, he doesn't really stray from it. And I think there could be a bit more potential in there. So I am going to put him in Cromulent perfectly fine. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of characters here, but at least it's kind of distributed. Okay, Patty. Patty is not as interesting as Selma. Um, there hasn't been a lot that's been explored in her character in the show. I do, I do respect that she is the only openly lesbian character in the show, I think, I believe. But I don't necessarily think that I learned much more about her from that. So I don't think Patty deserves to be anything higher than perfectly fine to be honest she she's definitely better than miss Ho i don't know actually i don't know because i think patty and selma they carry an air of like two sassy women they they have really funny moments um i kind of like in the early episodes where it was them against the world and obviously as time went on they separated slightly but i am gonna put patty in perfectly fine what is he doing in here Okay, Poochie, this is Homer's role in Itchy and Scratchy. And like a lot of characters that come late into a cartoon TV show, we don't tend to like them too much. And that was obviously represented in the show. He was brought on, he wasn't really liked. Um, the ratings went down. So as far as I'm concerned, Poochie can get bent. Bad Poochie. Okay, next we've got Mayor Quimby. He represents the corrupt political system. Um, he uses the town's funding to fund his own salacious escapades. He's more interesting than Ken Brockman. He's less interesting than Millhouse. But I think he does belong in Perfectly Fine. I do like his character and I like what's been done with him. But... I, he's obviously not a max power and he's not in the stonecutters. Next we've got Krusty's dad. So Rabbi Hyman Krostovsky, he doesn't contribute a whole lot in the show. Um, there was a nice story arc where Krusty, a bit like a poo, confronted his faith, but then he built a relationship with his father again, which was so fractured, which was really interesting to see. We saw that side to Krusty. Um, before then, we didn't know he was Jewish, I don't think. Um, but overall, I'm not enthused by him. I'm not enthused by him. And I'm going to put him in the No Homers Club. Ralph, I love Ralph. I said on a podcast before that if there was a character that I don't really gel with, or I think it was worded like my least favourite Simpsons character. And I think when I was on a podcast, I didn't really 
have an answer prepared. Um, so I said Ralph, but I do like Ralph a lot. I think he has some really fun comedic moments. I think he says the things that breaks up a scene. He's a bit like Cletus in a sense where he comes out with these one-liners that break up the momentum of the episode sometimes, uh, but in a fun way. Um, I do like Ralph. I do like Ralph. So I'm gonna put Ralph in Cromulent Perfectly Fine um, just like that. I do like him. I do like him. Yeah, I, I, I like Ralph. I like Ralph. Oh my god, this guy. So, <sighs> Bart School Friends. Actually, you know what? I'm not even going to look up his name. I don't know what he contributes to the show. He laughs along with people's jokes. He doesn't really do anything. He can get bent. Sorry. Next, we've got Rod. I like Rod and Todd a lot. I would say Todd has a bit more going on for him because he doesn't like any damn vegetables. He was also the one who was thrown into a basket and sent into the river. He obviously doesn't contribute much more. I think he belongs in the dud. The dud. I'm probably going to put Todd here. So because I don't think... Rod is as entertaining as Todd. I'm going to put Rod here. Okay, now we've got Judge Snyder. I love him more than this Judge Judy lady. I'm not going to go back and look at her name again, but I'm going to call her Judge Judy. I love Judge Snyder because he maintained the continuity of the show. When Principal Skinner was accused of being an imposter, Judge Snyder was the one who said the real Principal Skinner should get sent on a train I think he got sent to Timbuktu or somewhere like that. So Judge Snyder made that call. I think everyone respected it. He's the judge I would kind of want to judge if I was in trouble. I think he looks like he's got a bit of a heart. I do like him. I do like him. But again, he's a bit like the blue haired lawyer. You don't really see him apart from in the judge room. And yeah, I'm going to put him in the dud. Next, we've got Ruth Powers. I love the, as I said before, I love the episode, the Thelma and Louise parody that was with Marge. But unfortunately, Ruth Powers, except for showing up to be a bodybuilder, and then I think later on to be part of the Neighbourhood Watch, um, she doesn't contribute a lot in the show. Um, I like her more than her daughter, so she's not going to get bent, but she's going to be in the No Homers Club because... I don't know, actually. No, 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 no. I like her more. She contributes more than Janie. She contributes more than um, Database. So I think she can be next to Disco Stew. She's a powerful woman and she does deserve some kind of respect. Sanjay, however, Sanjay can get bent. Sorry, Sanjay. We don't need you. Actually, no, we'll put you in No Homers Club. There's not a reason to hate you but you just don't belong here. You just don't belong here. You, I mean, Apu, Apu's a hard worker. He doesn't need any help. And I think except for that 22 short films in Springfield, you, you're not really present, my man. So I don't think you need it. Okay, Todd, as I said before, I like Todd. He's got some iconic moments. I think I'm going to put Todd in perfectly fine. So Rod's here, Todd's here. I do like Todd more. He just warms my heart a bit more. Santa's little helper. I like Santa's little helper. I like dogs. Um, but he doesn't talk. And he's there. But he's not doing much. But he's perfectly fine. He's probably the best pet that the Simpsons could have. But he's certainly not going to be put on the same level as Maggie. And he's definitely not going to be in the Stonecutters Elite. But... He is far more loyal than any of these other characters. And I think his relationship with Bart is really sweet. Um, so I think he does deserve to be there. Sarah Wiggum. So Sarah Wiggum, she like, who was it? Brandine. We did find out there was a bit of a backstory about her in that she was a bit of a baddie. She basically seduced Chief Wiggum so her friends could go through a jewelry store and rob it. However, like I've said before, I can't just depend on one episode to carry her status. 
So I am sorry, Sarah, but up until the most recent seasons, you are in. Oh, oh, um, you're going to be a dud. Because Sideshow, I, I don't, I think I like her more than Sideshow Mel. Anyway, okay. Scratchy, easy. He's going to be the same as Itchy in the No Homers Club. And I'll put them like they're fighting each other, which is quite cute. And Mr. Teeny can look on and be like, hey, leave him alone. But he won't. Okay, next we've got um, the Sea Captain. The Sea Captain is a bit like Luigi Risotto. But he does at least go out of his box a bit more. And we do see him a bit more present in the show with the other characters. He's a bit like, like he's a bit like Lunch Lady Doris in that kind of tier, I think. So he's gonna be imperfectly fine. Selma, I love Selma. Um, we've seen a real arc with her, with her relationships, um, her wanting for a family, her troubles with getting a family. Um, she's had her heart broken, a bit like um, Edna. But I think she's just not on the same level as Edna just yet. I think Edna, she had a standalone presence, whereas Selma, I think in a lot of cases, she was supported by Patty. But that's not to say that I don't love her character and that if there was an episode with her in it, just her, I would be entertained. I do like Selma. Next, we've got Shauna. But like I said with Poochie, like as a whole, I'm not a big fan of introducing brand new characters and expecting us to instantly warm to them. It might just be that I haven't seen enough episodes with her in them um, to really make a good judgment. I do love her style. And I like that she is one of the only female bullies that are consistent. And um, I do think it was nice that Superintendent Chalmers was shown to have a pretty rebellious daughter. I think that's a good contrast. It's really hard. She does contribute, but I'm just not warm to her yet. I'm going to put her in the same, in the duds. I don't know if that's um, controversial, but I just think me personally, when she enters a scene, I don't think, oh, she killed it. I don't necessarily think, oh, I'm really happy she was there. I think she's good in a way to balance out the bullies and the schooling. And she kind of provides like a cool female character edge. But I think there are other characters in the show that could have carried that. Like Laura Powell, she could have stuck around. So yeah, I'm really sorry, Shauna, but you're going to be put there. Sherry and Terry. Sherry and Terry are icons. They've probably got the most iconic look in the show. They look very anemic. I don't know why they are so pale compared to everyone else. Something must have happened. I did a video where I spoke about a conspiracy that they actually have a third sister who's on the run and about to kill them. Um, <laughs> watch the video if you're into it. But I think like Helen Lovejoy, like Herman Herman, that's his name, there is a lot more that could be done with Sherry and Terry. We do see flash forwards of them in the future of the show, but on as a whole, I don't think they're used as much as they could, to be honest. We've got the sassy twins, Selma and Patty, so they don't have to have that, but they could have a really, really mean, I mean, they, I suppose they are mean to Lisa. They call her chubby. And with Bart, they call um, Bart stinky or something. But I think it could be dialed up a bit more. Principal Skinner, I love Principal Skinner. I think he's one of those characters that can certainly carry a scene. Um, I love steamed hams, obviously. But I also think that we see glimpses of his past in Vietnam. Whether or not you think that is his real backstory or not. Well, it, he did, he was in Vietnam, but he may not actually be Principal Skinner. But I think um, he's interesting enough to be put on the same level as Selma, um, certainly more than Mona Simpson. So yeah, Seymour Skinner, he can definitely put, be put in max power. Next we've got Waylon, Waylon Smithers, who is an icon. I love his obsession with Mr. Burns. His doll collection looks awesome. I do like him a lot. However, I don't think he contributes a huge, huge amount to the show. I think he's obviously a great assistant to Mr. Burns, but I can't really, I mean, he has got that amazing scene where he's on his computer and then 
his screensaver comes down and it's Mr. Burns going, you are really good at turning me on. That was a really good one. But otherwise, I think Skinner can go in perfectly fine. That's probably going to be controversial, but that's just how I feel. That's just how I feel. Snake. I love Snake. I think he's kind of a sexy character. I love his voice. I do like him. I do like him. Um, I think he's going to be pretty high up, you know? I don't know if he crosses that barrier, though, because I think, obviously, Skinner and Selma offer a lot more in the show. He is a great, like, bad character that you can go... Like, not a bad character, but he is a rebellious character that he has an iconic feature in the show. So I think he is going to be... Oh... No, but then he's kind of like Kang and Kodos in the fact that I love when he's in a scene. So I think he's going to be a max power. He's going to be a max power. Okay, and then we've got Snowball. Whether or not it's Snowball, one, two, three, four, a million, it's Snowball. Um, similarly to Santa's little helper, but we don't really see a lot of Snowball. So she's probably going to be in the one after that. I'm sorry. Dogs rule. Cats draw. I do like cats, but I like dogs more. And yeah, anyway, next we've got Squeaky Voice Teen, who is a, another iconic character. He's a bit like, he runs in the same kind of theme as like Hans Moleman and Old Gil in that he is a parody of a parody. Um, he's very, yeah, I think he's going to be Cromula perfectly fine, to be honest. I do like him, I think. Actually, no, he's got a really annoying voice. Hmm... This is hard. Oh, no. I've got to think, if I'm watching an episode and he turns up, am I thinking, oh yeah, that was funny. He does the same bit over and over again. No, he's going to be a dud. Yeah, I think he's going to be a dud. I think so. He's going to be a quite a high up dud though. He's going to be a high up dud. Okay, now we've got this crazy cowboy guy. So, like old Jewish man, he is the rich Texan. Shoot, shoot, one, two, three, four. Shoot, shoot, one, two, three, four. He doesn't offer a lot, I've got to be honest. But I do find him more entertaining than the likes of these guys. So, he is quite mean. Um, I don't like that he fires a gun round so readily. So, he's going to be in the No Homes Club. Johnny Tightlips. I love Johnny Tightlips. He, like Fat Tony, is a real... He represents a real figurehead in the Mafia. He really nicely represents kind of what the stereotype is of the Mafia in Mafia movies. He was actually based off of a real-life gangster. So Johnny Tightlips represents Frank Tightlips Gussenberg, who was shot down in real life in the St. Valentine's Day Massacre in Chicago. And he repeatedly replied, nobody shot me before passing away at a local Chicago hospital. So yeah, I kind of like the story that he does represent a true real life gangster. I think at least he's he's got a history there. I might be really ignorant and Louis and Legs does. I mean, the Simpsons are masters in parody and references. So they probably have, and I'm just too ignorant to know. So I'm gonna put him in Cromulent perfectly fine. Okay. Next, we've got Reverend Lovejoy. He's obviously a staple in the Simpsons Family Week. He masterfully controls the Sunday service. Whether or not he is more entertaining than Helen Lovejoy, I haven't quite yet decided. Um, but again, he is... He does bridge that gap between the pious, pious Christians that are Ned and Helen Lovejoy. And he kind of is that bridge between um, them and the Simpsons family. He uses the prose and God's teachings to kind of reason with both sides. Um, and I kind of like that instead of religion, he's more interested in trains. So that's quite an interesting part of his character. I think overall, he does contribute a bit more than Helen Lovejoy. Um, so I'm going to put him in perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. Okay. Okay. Next, we've got Troy McClure, who's on a similar level to Lionel Hutz, not just because they're voiced by the same character, but because they are both charismatic, but also equally quite horrible people. Um, they take people for a ride. He broke poor Selma's heart. Um, but 
you know, he thought in his mind he was doing the best thing for her. She got to hang out with an A-list celebrity while he um, his reputation was maintained. But I think overall he was a great character. Um, I loved that he not only was integrated within the TV world um, that The Simpsons watched and the documentaries that the kids watched in school, he was also a big part of Springfield as a citizen. So therefore I'm gonna put him in the max power category. So then we've got Uta, Uta Zorka, Uta Zorka. I've got a whole theory about him, but I won't go into it. Um, he is an exchange student who is always down in his luck, bless him. I do kind of like him. I I like him more than these guys, probably. I, I'm, I'm grouping these guys together because they're all in the school world. And I think when I see him in the school hall, he's a lot more funny. So I'm going to put him as the dud because, yes, he's funny, but he doesn't break that mould into being, you know, a standalone character that these guys could probably command in a scene. Um, but yeah, Wendell, poor Wendell, he's always sick. I'm going to put him like, you don't want to invite him to any club. He's going to throw up on you. And no one wants that. So I'm going to put him in the No Homers Club. I'm really sorry, Wendell, but no one wants to sit next to you. And yeah, yeah, you hear gagging, but I don't hear you talking. Next, we've got Chief Wiggum. Chief Wiggum is a very good character. Um, represents the incapability of the police system which is very poignant. Um, I do like his contributions to the show. He's also a hard one because I do warm to these characters a lot more, but I do understand that he... he does contribute quite a bit to the show. Um, I'm going to put him in max power. I'm going to put him in max power because he does have a tender relationship with Ralph in that no matter what his son does, he always, I mean, he always tries his best for him. Um, he's got a dull wife called Sarah and he outshines her in every way. But yeah, I kind of, I, I do like Wiggum. He's a max power, I think. Next, we've got Willie. Grease me up, woman. Willie, I like Willie. He's a funny guy. But I don't think that... He deserves the max power status because I think he's not quite well-rounded enough. So therefore, I'm going to put him in perfectly fine, cromulent. But he's going to be fairly high up. He's going to be perfectly, not quite high up. Next we've got this guy. I can't remember who he is. Oh my God, I don't even know what to call him. For that reason, sir, I do not even know how to position you. Therefore, you can get... Ben. Rainier Wolfcastle carries a similar role to um, Ken Brockman in the sense that he's only really visible on TV or if there is a rich party um, at a country club, he is normally there. I do like that he's a parody of Arnold Schwarzenegger, obviously. And fun fact, did you know that if you match up all of the scenes on TV of his movies, they build a cohesive movie, which is cool but not cool enough to pull him into the max power category. So I'm sorry, Rainier, you are gonna be in perfectly fine. Next, we've got the yes, man. And he is, I mean, without a doubt, he's gonna be on a similar level to Luigi Rizzotto. They're all on the phone. Well, those two are on the phone, anyway. Okay, Blinky, Blinky had some, Blinky was quite iconic in the sense that he really pushed Mr. Burns to get into politics. Um, show the corruption of the power plant. I mean, you can talk to your grandma and she would know where Blinky is from. He's an icon. But I think he's on a similar level to Snow... Mm, snowball, I think. Again, animal that doesn't talk. All Blinky did was be on the end of a fishing line and poor Blinky had to be eaten. But then he came back again, I think. Um... So he's got magic powers, he's a good fish, he's got three eyes, he's going to be a dud. 
Agnes Skinner. Agnes Skinner is probably the most... Ugh, she would be the kind of woman I would be really scared of. She seems really intimidating. Um, she runs in the same circle as Helen Lovejoy, uh, Maud when she was alive. Um, like a judgy woman who would also throw herself into some really strange relationships, probably to awaken some kind of youth that she was trying to capture back. Um, she does control Skinner a huge amount, obviously. Um, and I don't know if I like that. I don't know if I like Agnes bossing Skinner around. She's... But I think she's kind of a good mum. She's at least a bit doting towards him. Um, there's episodes where she loves him, obviously, more than her real son, which is questionable, but sweet in a way. But I wouldn't want to be at a party with her. But then at the same time, she is more interested than these guys. So it's it's deciphering between she's mean, but at least she's interesting. And I think she's perfectly fine. I love the scene when Skinner is flirting with um, Edna and she's just peeking over that fence, staring at them. That was really funny. I'm not very good at describing scenes, but I know a good scene when I see it. Next, we've got Arnie Pie in the Sky. Arnie Pie in the Sky doesn't contribute a huge amount in the show. His main communication is with Ken Brockman, of course. And I wish that Arnie Pie would come down from the sky just to talk to some of our other characters. But there's not a real big reason to hate him. So he's just going to be in the No Homers Club next to Wendell. Next, we've got the KBB. Is it KBBL, isn't it? KB. Now, there is that scene of them when they're interviewing Mr. Burns and they're using all those sound bites to make him look silly, which is really funny. But I think the main humour that comes from that is Monty's um, reactions to it. So I don't think... They hold a lot of talent in the show. Um, they're just there as radio presenters, which is fine because, you know, you need characters to support the other characters because otherwise it would just be a show full of main characters and who wants that? Bart Simpson. We need Bart Simpson in the S tier. Stonecutter's Elite. I, Lisa, we see far more exposure than Bart in the show, I feel like. Um, especially in the newer episodes. I feel like Bart needs to be given a bit more to shine. Um, in the early episodes, I feel like he was more of the main character and even more of a main character than Homer, but slowly that seems to be slipping. And he seems to be grouped together with like Martin, Nelson and Milhouse as kind of a gang. When I need him to come out of that box there's been so many amazing moments with him yeah he's he's um springfield resident bad boy but he also has a whole lot of heart too and i think bart simpson is obviously he belongs in the stone cutters apu this is going to be controversial because as we all know he's been less visible in the show but that does not take away from the fact that apu has had so many brilliant episodes and he's had some really great standout moments. Um, we got to really learn about his family. He questioned his faith. He had to become a citizen of America. Um, I do love Apu. So I think he's a real powerhouse character. Yeah, it's just sad we don't see him more. Um, and I hope we do see more of him in the future because I think he contributed so much to the show. And I love seeing his family and how he deals with octoplets and mandula. And yeah, I love Apu. Apu is going to be in max power. He's awesome. So let's put him there. Next, we've got Bleeding Gums Murphy. He is the iconic character that spurred Lisa on to pursue a passion for jazz. He's the jazz man testify. But... He hasn't been a huge presence in the show since his death. There was an episode in, I think, the most recent season where we're introduced to his um, uh, son, which was a really nice episode. I think it was nice that the creators went back to his character because I think he obviously he had a big impact on Lisa. However, I don't think he contributes enough to belong with the consistent characters in the show. I think I'm going to put him in... The No Homers Club, quite honestly, because he's kind of on the same wavelength as Marvin Monroe, being a character that was killed off quite early, very early. But he's got that edge because he made an impact. And I think anyone that helps Lisa guide into being a more confident being 
is a poignant character. Next, we've got Artie Ziff. As I've said before, I like the episode where Homer and Marge are often tempted by um, outside forces, whether that be Mindy, Lurleen Lumpkin, the bowling guy, Ned, um, and then there's Artie Ziff. Artie Ziff is... Marge does not fancy him, whereas I think Homer has a bit of a man crush on him, and so he feels very um, belittled by him. I, Even though Artie Ziff isn't in a lot of episodes, but I, I think he does have a big impact on the show. In the episode, The Way We Was, that carries the scene where Homer and Marge finally meet as high school um, sweethearts, and it really pushed their relationship. If Artie Ziff wasn't there to rip Marge's dress, she would never have left him stranded and she would never have picked Homer up and they would have never shared that lovely moment. And I kind of lit, I, I kind of like that there's a bit of an a-hole that wanders into Springfield and shakes things up. Yeah, his voice is iconic. Um, such a great performance. I love how he shakes the Simpsons up. Therefore, I am going to put him in perfectly fine. He doesn't quite break that mould out of Cromulent. Um, but yeah. Next we've got Barney. Now for Barney, I do feel a bit sad for him because I found that when they sobered him up, he became less and less visible. And he is one of those characters that went through a change and it's kind of a permanent change, but I don't think it worked. Thinking back to Barney's main episodes, the um, Pugahuntus film he made is obviously one of the standout moments in the show. At the beginning of the show, he was amongst these characters, even some of these characters. Let's not forget that before Ned came along in the show's creation, Barney was going to be Homer's best friend and live next door to Homer. The creators had big plans for Barney and unfortunately that's just not come into fruition. Um, I don't know if that's the right word, but anyway. So I'm going to put Barney... I'm going to put him here just to make a statement. Okay, we got Bernice Hibbert. Let's talk about her positives. She wears a great 80s power suit. That's it. We don't really hear much from her. Um, we don't know her. Um, all we know is that she makes a good home for Dr. Hibbert. It's nice to see that part of his life. Um, they're kind of like the middle class. They're kind of on the middle class, high class fringes of Springfield. So it's quite nice to see how they compare to the rest of the Simpsons. But I wouldn't say that's all down to her. Um, she doesn't really say a lot. Um, she doesn't contribute a lot. So Bernice, I am so sorry, honey, but you are not going to be higher than a dud. Oh, I don't know. No, she, I think Luann contributes more. Sarah, we've seen a bit more of a backstory. Um... Bernice, I'm just grouping these up together because they're like housewives um, and a bit more interesting. So I'm really sorry, Bernice, but you are going to be in the No Homers Club. And then we got this dude who um, poisoned Homer and gave him like an existential crisis. And I don't think he deserves to even... Well, he does deserve to be on the tier list. He deserves to get bent. Um, he's evil and he didn't show any remorse and uh, yeah he could be the secret power villain in the entire show and it could have been all a plan to you know kill Homer but we don't see that much from him and I mean I kind of put him like here like Mrs Muntz because he was just mean Mr Burns has to be in the stone Cutter's elite group. He is fantastic. He is TV's greatest villain. He has a really fantastic, quirky, sassy size. He is just the pinnacle of what a great cartoon character is. He's got a great voice. Harry Shearer does him perfectly. Um, I love, you know, his relationship with Smithers and how he's so ignorant to Smithers' love for him. And also his relationship with the Simpsons goes so deep. I mean, Marge painted him. Um, he went through so many artists to um, get a good portrait of him. And she was like, right, I'm going to be honest. And he, he liked it. Well, I think he got convinced to like it. Mr. Burns undoubtedly is in the Stonecutters Elite group. 
Sideshow Bob. Sideshow Bob is one of those interesting characters that doesn't appear consistently in the show, but every time he returns, his character is built upon more and more. Um, We first met him when he had a real rivalry with Krusty in Krusty Gets Busted, and this vendetta or revenge then focused on Bart when he basically put Sideshow Bob in jail. And through this relationship, we have seen them go through highs, lows. I think Sideshow Bob is just a really fantastic character. The voice acting is impeccable. He has so much class, um, sophistication. He's just a real powerhouse in the show. And I think he deserves to be in max power. Very high up, very high up. Bravo, Sideshow Bob. Next, we've got Carl, who is too good looking. He is too good looking to even be on this list. But overall, He's going to be next to Lenny. Next, we've got Brandine. Brandine, like a few characters in the show, the later episodes, like Sarah, show her to be hiding a bit of a past. She is a secret smarty pants. And yeah, it's, it's difficult because I kind of preferred it when she was just the female version of Cletus. And I mean, after that episode where she is a smarty pants, maybe she does just return back to that which is fine. But I think she's not as strong as Cletus. So I think she's for, I don't know. Um, I mean, they can be part of the same tier list, tier um, section because they are family. She's his mom. He's her dad. Um, she's his daughter. Their cousins, grandparents, whatever. I think they deserve to be next to each other. They kind of carry the same force in a way. She might be a bit further down in that section, but yeah. Okay, next we got Superintendent Chalmers. Superintendent Chalmers is part of the steamed ham skit, which goes down as legendary. However, I think it was more Skinner's um, improvisation that carried the scene. He's always a great character to compare to the zany going on, goings on in the show. Um, he's a great straight man. Um, however, he's just not that interesting. Like in the recent seasons, like, you know, his relationship with Shauna is explored. Like he's her dad, but I think he's going to be a dad. I don't know. Um, no, he's going to be perfectly fine because like I've said, Skinner's above him performance wise in their scenes. But I still think he's, I mean, he carries more of a presence than Jacqueline Bouvier. Carries more of a presence than Dr. Nick. So yeah, Superintendent Chalmers, perfectly fine. The Crazy Cat Lady, the Crazy Cat Lady, like Brandoon, had an episode where it showed that um, she did have a secret past. She was a smart young thing at school and she really progressed into being a lawyer and doctor. She was very successful, but the struggles and pressures of success pushed her into alcoholism and collecting cats. It's a really tragic story, but it's one that was only explored in one episode. So I'd feel really bad if I just based my entire decision on that. So I'm going to put her in the dud because otherwise she doesn't really contribute a huge amount. Like if there's a crazy person needed, yeah, she's there. Bumblebee man, same as Luigi, same as the yes man. They are walking catchphrases. He's fine. I don't find his scenes very funny, but he's fine. He's obviously more iconic than these two. So I'm gonna put him in the no homers club because you wouldn't really want him around. And I don't really want him there. But he is there and he he wears a cool costume. So he's very iconic in that sense. Um, He just carries a bit more of a presence than these guys, I think, who run in the same circle. Um, Then we've got Booberella, who's got a great look. I love Elvira. She's a great parody. However, she is stuck inside the box of the TV. So we don't see her much else apart from it. Um, But I do like her look. And I like her boobies. So I'm going to put her in the no homers club because let's be honest, if there was a club in the Simpsons, these guys probably won't be invited. They won't be invited. Okay, so just to sum up, I can't believe I've done this. You might not agree with this, but 
Stonecutters Elite, we have Homer Simpson, Edna, Lisa, Marge, Mo, Bart, and Mr. Burns. These are the characters that are the Avengers of the Simpsons. The only character that I might put at the end of this is Edna. I think Homer belongs there. I think Mr. Burns belongs second. And then I'm going to put, I think Mo. No, no. Lisa stays there. Bart goes there. Mo goes there. Marge goes there. And I think Edna goes there. Okay, then we've got Max Power. I think this is a pretty good list. I think it kind of sums up those iconic characters that you would kind of miss if they weren't there. The one person who is kind of on the cuffs would be Mona. I think otherwise, this is a pretty good list. Um, Some people might dispute Fat Tony or Fit Tony in here, but this is my opinion and I love him. So I'm going to keep him there. I'm not going to read all these characters now, but these are the characters that I like their presence in the show. I don't necessarily think they're standalone, awesome, awesome, awesome characters, but I do like it when they turn up in an episode and I do have a bit of a giggle when they do. The duds, these are the characters that I think deserve a bit more. They they have some potential and they're a bit lost. Um, I think the blue head lawyer can go near the end of that, but I think otherwise these are the characters that I mean, let's be honest, I didn't really feel comfortable putting them in perfectly fine because sometimes they're not. Okay, no Homer's Club. These are the characters that I wouldn't expect to see at like a Simpsons reunion. Like, you know, if the Simpsons, God forbid, was to be cancelled and they return to like a um, a highlight show, these characters I doubt would be included. These guys probably would just because of how iconic they are to Bart and Lisa, but I couldn't see them coming back. Okay, get Ben. These are the characters that I either really dislike. They're one catchphrase characters. They're characters who I don't even know the name of. Um, And they're characters that are just pure evil and tried to kill Homer and didn't show any remorse. And there's this guy who, I mean, he has gotten, I know his voice, but I just don't know who he is. I think he's one of those that kind of plays different roles in Springfield and he kind of meanders I don't know. Anyway, so there we have it, folks. That is my definitive list. Tearing, categorizing, rating the Simpsons characters in Springfield. And you guys feel free to make your own. Send it to me. Shout at me. Tell me if I've done something wrong because I love it. And it's good engagement for the channel, if I'm being honest. So, I really enjoy doing this. If you want to see more tier videos in the future, do let me know. Um, But for the meantime, I'll smell you later.